Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasulullah, Amrin Inkum. And always a reminder for myself, and I have the Qur'aji, Sadaifah, Miskeen, Zalim, Jahal, but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah. So we have some more questions and answers and uh, please those people online to email help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah and uh, Qurbani for the Hajj, so Hajj starts in two weeks, Zul Hajj, inshaAllah those Qurbanis then they'll start to get their counts. They have now for Kenya, the tawf Tawfiq will be handling. Uh, India, we have uh, Nasir will be handling and then the uh, Pakistan, we have the Jama in Pakistan will be handling for Los Angeles. Asim has a program uh, I think Ms. Ba will have for Chicago and uh, also for Vancouver then we'll have uh, Qurban. So people can choose where they want their Qurban then that'll be sent either to Kenya, India, Pakistan or US or Canada inshaAllah. What do we got? Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Alhamdulillah Sayyidi, how to prepare for death? Is there any special meditation? Yeah, inshaAllah. The, the meditation, all of them is a preparation for death so that uh, you can leave the body and leave a life of only physicality. As you build your spirituality, the power of your spirituality increases when the body is entering into a, a death state. So the more the person is meditating, contemplating, they, they, they love the energy and they realize that that's what's real and that the physicality is not real. And so that the physicality, its, it's attachment to dunya begins to, to drop and in the sense that it's not locking their heart, doesn't mean that they don't eat, drink and drive cars. But it means that the dunya is not locking their heart. As a result their, their conversation, their life, their enthusiasm is in spirituality. You know other people, dunya people if you sit with them all they want to talk about is dunya and uh, it's their religion, it's, it's their akhirah, it's their deen, their dunya, everything. But when it leaves the heart then dunya is in its place. And the person feels their contentment only if they're speaking about the spirituality and realities and haqqaiqs. So the meditation and muraqabah is a strong sort of preparation for that. And the last 10 days of Ramadan at Qumil an -Nar is also a very strong spiritual practice. That's why the itikaf and like a minor seclusion at that time and that's to visualize the grave and that there's difficulty in the grave and what will I do in this difficulty if Allah puts me in this difficulty. And then the, the, the student uh, begins to perceive that the only relief from difficulty is the salawat and love of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's why then the importance from now to understand is that this love and this relationship is a, is a salvation. That if we're faced in difficulty and we don't know what condition happens and we're in a bad condition, the only way to relieve that condition is to make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad so that his presence comes and that becomes a, a najat, a salvation. That imagine that in the midst of difficulty or punishment or an unease that when we begin to make salawat and the presence of Prophet comes, he makes everything to be cool and peaceful. And that Allah will never punish in the proximity of where Prophet is coming for his nation. So then it becomes a relief from difficulties. And many people have had visions and sights of Prophet relieving them of the azab of the grave and, and conditions that are not good. And they see themselves lying and they see the face of Prophet and then lying at gazing upon them while they are lying in their grave and in concern. So these are all important steps upon the path to realize that your salvation in the grave is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad We said many times, you call out to Allah all you want and there's nothing going to stop that punishment. 
But if you call to Prophet Allah is going to wonder, how come you're not calling your Messenger? How come you don't have that love? How come you don't have that knowledge to call him? So that's a, is a big no-no for somebody think they're going to call Allah and He's going to relieve punishment in the grave. That's going to be its own punishment that, why are you, why are you calling me? Why aren't you calling? That when you're an oppressor to yourself you had to have run to the presence of Prophet Those who have been trained by awliya they know that. So in life when they trained and did seclusion they understood. So to cut short to that whole difficulty, build your love now for Prophet so that that love is always accompanying you in whatever condition and wherever we go in life. Then you begin to realize that with all the difficulty in dunya how he relieves everything. Any type of difficulty in dunya Prophet will relieve those inshaAllah. So imagine then the difficulty of akhirah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, we wanted to know what you meant when you said it can be dangerous if you can't spiritually fight because I'm seeing a lot of people with pictures of demons marked on their arms. Yeah, what was the, f- the beginning of the question? Uh, just wanted to know what you meant when you said it can be dangerous if you can't spiritually fight. Yeah, and that was in reference to what question? I think it was in reference to somebody trying to make a connection with them or or, or do spiritual things or that that's a a warning that on two two sides that people who, who dabble into spirituality and and do certain practices then those are dangerous because anytime you open up a spiritual gate then there's a a danger of anything coming through it. And then people who try to make themselves or claim themselves as something then the problem is that all of these nefarious energies are the ones that they have to deal with and if they're not prepared for those then again immense danger. But in reference to spiritual training that's why every step you know we go step by step, step by step and that's why Allah gives for an example and many reasons why Allah says, don't ask for something that would cause you harm. Means don't ask for things that you don't understand, everything has a step. So some the funniest one is when people say, I just want to see, I just want to see, I just want to see. But that what you see is going to come and torment you, make you kill yourself and jump out of a window. So seeing is not the, the cure for everything, it is a, is a difficulty for every… it's an opening of extreme difficulty. So imagine the blissfulness of ignorance that you walk out now in the night time, you walk… Some people even think it's, it's like, oh I love the nighttime energy or because they don't see the demons that are all around them. So what's that movie that I always make reference to? Well, all of a sudden he turns a candle and there's like 500 demons like right at his face but he couldn't see them. As soon as you turn the light on you can see them. It was Reddick or Ruddick, some, some sort of a movie. But the analogy of it is that as you go out there are demons and ifrit all over you because they're just… nighttime is theirs. And the bliss of somebody not seeing that and they think, oh it's so great, everything's so great, oh you don't know what is, what is all around you. Had you vision, you would see all these afreet all over you, trying to crawl on you, all these, these horrible creatures all over your feet, your arms, your legs coming all over you. So, so asking, just let me see, let me see is, is, is not a cure, it can be an immense, immense sort of horrific opening, especially if you're not trained. That's why then step by step is training, one I should make my connection. If I don't have a connection means that I don't have an ability to bring an immense amount of power. So as soon as I have a strong madad and there's something coming near me I have to go straight into my madad so that their energy comes and begins to frighten anything coming towards me. Then the, when they come they say, oh this, this person has a lot of energy, let's just go somewhere else. So if the person doesn't reach that then they're like a walking target. 
that everything tries to come to attack them. So imagine then if they could see and they could see these creatures are coming, they don't have the ability to defend themselves and then the creature sees that they see them, then now they can come psychologically and begin to sort of torment the individual. If you can't see what's attacking you, you're, you're, you're better off. If you can see something attacking you and you can't defend yourself that could be pretty horrific. So spirituality is something dangerous <clears throat> but when you follow the system that the shaykhs are giving then alhamdulillah can become very powerful and that's first to make your connection. That's why you don't leave the pieces out and start to sort of do your own program. You have to make the connection, the muraqabah has to be strong because we said before they send a frequency, they send a frequency, they send a frequency until that frequency is resonating within you like a vibration. And those vibrations also push away the different creatures, the different bad elements and bad energies because you're vibrating now higher, you're vibrating now stronger. As a result those things are moving away, they get burned in the proximity of that vibration. So those have to be solid and strong and that's why when that connection is strong then the seclusions begin and those become the sort of purification and the perfection of that connection. But until then they have to make the connections very strong inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <clears throat> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi what is the tapping feeling on the head during meditation? What's the tapping feeling on the head? Somebody's tapping you on the head? I don't know what that feeling is. But we said that this is an abnormal process. <laughs> so yeah, everyone is having their own experiences. If there's something next to you that just trying to annoy you and keep tapping you in the head then try not to focus on that. Keep <laughs> making your connection and uh, you, you, you keep going. So, you know, they can try to bite you and annoy you and just keep your connection and, and don't pay attention to anything, inshaAllah. InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha.